With the pop culture scene today, it seems almost impossible to think of a time when science fiction wasn't cool. But it wasn't that long ago when fans of sci-fi either had to closet their interests or show them publicly and bear the shaming that went along with it. The scarlet N for nerd. Thankfully, there's never been a better time to be a nerd than today. Almost the entirety of the last decade's most popular movies and TV shows are science fiction or fantasy. Lord of the Rings, Doctor Who, the entire Marvel Universe with its 30 plus movies and spin-off series, and of course, Star Wars. Simply put, Star Wars is science fiction royalty. When it burst onto the scene in 1977 as a surprise hit, it changed forever. The way that movies were filmed, the way special effects were incorporated, merchandise, trilogies, summer blockbusters, it even added words, phrases, and characters to the social lexicon did endure almost four decades later and with no signs of slowing down. In fact, it seems to be accelerating. Over 40 years later, and Star Wars continues to have a cultural impact with a number of successful spin-off series even released this year and a seemingly endless supply of merchandise. But what started it all? Well, it all boils down to George Lucas, a relatively small filming budget, and a classic story that incorporates aspects of the Western, the war movie, the hero's epic journey, and of course, science fiction. And Han Solo's DL-44 blaster is a perfect amalgamation of all those things. It's part Western with its old-fashioned wooden handle and slung on the hip of a quick-drawing anti-hero who defied authority. It's part war movie. It's actually built on a Mauser C-96 broom handle, the official sidearm of Imperial Germany in World War I. And it's a perfect reminder of just how low a budget George Lucas was working with. Han Solo's blaster came from George Lucas's vision of a used future. It was quite a departure from the clean, lush, high-tech utopias depicted in science fiction up to that point, and it affected everything in the Star Wars universe. The planets, the cities, the ships, the rebels, and yes, Han Solo's DL-44 blaster. See, all the weapons used in filming the original Star Wars were built off surplus supplied by London prop house Bapti & Company. Surplus was still inexpensive in 1976 and also had a worn look about it, both of which were perfect for George Lucas's needs. For Han Solo's DL-44 blaster, they selected the aforementioned C-96 Mauser broom handle. Three were originally created for production in case of parts breakage, and one of them, serial number 299415, had seen previous screen time in the hands of Frank Sinatra in his film, The Naked Runner, where he played an assassin. By using a scope and mount, shortened barrel, flash hider, and some small parts glued on to give it a futuristic appearance, a humble Mauser broom handle became the sidearm of Han Solo. All three Han Solo blasters were created using real firing weapons converted to fire blanks. This would help the actors react realistically as well as helping out the special effects department after the fact. When Star Wars was finished filming, no one had an inkling of how successful it was gonna be, let alone its cultural significance. And so like most props after a movie, it was returned to the prop house, disassembled, and readied for the next job. So when time came to film Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, no one could locate the originals. The, the metal replicas and resin models that were created for A New Hope were used to to finish out the trilogy, but proving again that the originals are always better. But what had happened to the original blasters? For decades, they appeared lost to time. But in the year 2000, Prop House Bapti and Company changed hands to owner Tony Watts. Now, as the last of the Sterlings used in Star Wars were being sold off to collectors, Watts became curious, and he began to wonder what happened to some of the other weapons that had been used in filming Star Wars. To satisfy such curiosity, who better to contact than the original gunsmith at Bapti & Company during the filming of A New Hope, Carl Schmidt. Together and over time, the two men using Schmidt's first-hand experience and Watts' access to Bapti & Company inventory found, 
the original scope, which had been interchanged between the original three pistols and the original C96 Mauser broom handle. One of only five left in Bapting Company inventory, it bore the telltale marks on its shortened barrel and its side from where the scope and mount had been placed. It was the only one of the original three left to survive. Watts then asked Schmidt if, quote, if he was prepared to return to Bapti and rebuild what he had helped create all those years earlier. He would, but on the condition that they would only reassemble the parts they had in spirit of how they were originally put together. The goal of the two men wasn't to create the blaster exactly as it was in 1977. Their goal wasn't to create speculation among fans. Their goal was purity. As close as they could make it to the original, despite the decades in between. Even though reproduction greebles, or the small parts that they glued onto weapons to give them a futuristic look, even though they're available, they weren't included on this gun in the interest of originality. The end result is the only surviving example of this iconic and instantly recognizable sidearm. This is a DL-44 blaster that started it all. This is the sidearm of the smuggler, quick draw artist, stuck up, half-witted, scruffy nerf herder, Han Solo. And just like the movies it was a part of, it's back. After more than four decades to reintroduce itself to the next generation of adoring fans. And it's only at Rock Island Auction Company.